Today's video is how to manual. Now this video is definitely for the beginners, but you never know, you may get a tip out of this one as well, if, even if you've been doing it for a while. So, first I suppose we want to start off with foot positioning. So some of you might think that proper manualing is done with your foot on the tail, like this. But it's actually not. So when I'm just riding around manualing, my foot is actually right here. It splits the line between where the tail starts to go up. So I'm right here in that little pocket just behind the bolts. The ball of my foot is close to the bolt. So I'm not like this. I have my foot split evenly across the board, my heel hanging off, my toe hanging off, and then split evenly across the tail, right like that. My front foot is sort of just a comfortable tilt. I sort of have it like this, riding around. I also usually have my shoulders open when I'm doing a manual. So I'm just cruising around like so. So the first thing you might want to do is find somewhere that's got some lines on the ground, some obvious markers. So right now I'm in a basketball court, which has some real easy markers. So I'm going to start with this circle right here. I'm keeping my knees comfortably bent and I don't lean back too much. I mostly just try and lift up. You lean back too far, you're just going to want to slip out. So then it's just practice, practice, practice. You know, you do 10 minutes every day, you're gonna improve your manual incrementally. So we can do this all day, but that's gonna be pretty dry. I'm gonna get onto nose manuals now. So my nose manual foot positioning is just a slight tweak over from my regular one. So I still have my foot angled a tiny bit. So let's jump on here. My back foot's pretty similar in the same spot, except just like an inch further this way. My front foot is in a fairly similar spot. I, for some reason, seem to have my foot on a slight angle, but I'm still essentially splitting that line. And I have my toes over just a bit. But I think there's a reason that I keep this foot open a tiny bit, and I'm gonna show you guys why. So I think it goes without saying that the most frightening part of trying a nose manual is the thought of getting pitched forward and bailing. That never really happens to me anymore. After so many years of skateboarding, I know when it's about to happen. But part of it is I keep my front foot open like so. So my shoulders are open when I'm nose manualing. And basically what I'm ready for is if my balance goes too far forward, I'm ready to just step off. So that's the safe way of exiting a nose manual forward. Let's take a look at that again. So the process for doing a nose manual is going to be pretty much the same. Like pick two lines and try and go from point A to point B and then just comfortably place your wheels back down when you're done. Alright, now let's go actually try them on something. When starting out, you want to start with something short and low. We used to use pallets a lot. So back in the 90s, we'd be skating tennis courts and we just have like a four by four pallet and a scrap of plywood scabbed onto there. And that was sort of our manual pad, you know, that or whatever else we could find in a parking garage. So we started out by doing them basically just long enough to hold it and get to the end of it. It's never a bad idea to make sure there's no rocks leading up to the manual pad because when you're getting ready to jump up on something, you're not ready to absorb a little bump from a rock. You're gonna get pitched right into the edge of the pad. So obviously we're going to assume that you have the capability to be able to ollie up onto a curb if you're going to be trying to do manuals and nose manuals. Now let's quickly get into how to get out of those. So basically it's just riding off a curb and if you already know how to ride off a curb, which I can only assume you do, it's just lifting up your front wheels long enough to clear this and plop on down. Let's do one anyways. So good news! The glorious thing about doing a manual is you're already in that position. So just hold that manual and plop on down that curve again. Alright, nose manuals is where this gets a little bit tricky. 
what you might want to learn is how to do a little nose bonk on a sidewalk crack. So let's go see if I can find one of those. So what I'm looking for here is just a little lip in the joint of the sidewalk crack. Something to bonk my nose off of a little bit. And I'm gonna ride forward with my feet on the nose and I'm just gonna kind of bonk it. Like shoot my weight forward and on the nose a bit. So ideally you shouldn't be skating any manual pad with a substantial crack right at the end of it. But the point is, it gives you the motion. And what you're doing is you're gonna do a well-timed little nolly pop right at the end of your nose manual to help you clear your back wheels. So you can do this off any old curb. And again, the lower the better, because if you come off and you clip your back wheel, you want your trucks up high enough that you're gonna come out unscathed. So we're just talking like a few inches, like three or four inches, it'd be a nice height curve to learn this on. You're gonna ride forward and just kind of like bonk that imaginary edge when you're nose manualing. And you can do it without doing a nose manual. You can just ride off it at first. Here's a quick tip though. Don't put your foot at the end of the nose. Reason being, your foot's just right ready to roll off and roll your ankle. So keep your foot back in this pocket here. Like I said, splitting that line with the center of your foot. So now that you're a super pro at all the steps of doing a manual, there's no reason for me to break it down any further and start doing manuals from start to finish because basically it's just combining all these little steps into doing a manual. And the hardest part might be if you live in a small area to find an appropriate thing to learn on. So again, a pallet with a piece of plywood can go a long way in learning this. So very quickly, you guys know I love to nerd out about stuff. I'm gonna talk about what kind of boards will help you manual the best. So right now I have a great combination. Now, you know I often talk about the fingers of flat on a board. So the more fingers of flat and what I'm talking about is the space between the bolt and where it starts to go up and here, the more fingers of flat you have on a deck, the easier it is to manual and you're able to do it nicely with your foot in that little pocket. Now, if you happen to have a very steep deck that has say only two fingers of flat between the bolts and the tail, it's gonna be a lot harder. It's gonna have a smaller pocket. So we're talking manual bandwidth here. The amount of adjustment room that you get in your manuals. So I have tall trucks on here, Indies, and I have quite a bit of space right here. And that is ideal, in my opinion, for holding manuals because I have a broad range of control. My nose and tail doesn't feel heavy. It feels roughly the same weight throughout the whole arc. So when you have that short distance, it makes it choppy. You've got a smaller distance of control, you know, just a smaller range. Now to get around that, you put your foot further up on the nose or tail. And that's what I found I've had to do with other decks that have that condition where it has pretty pronounced pop because of the short space but a very poor manual. You gotta put your foot higher up on the nose or tail, which feels a bit more sketchy or dangerous, but that's the workaround for getting a good manual on a different shaped deck. Okay, so there was a lot of information in there and manuals are not that complicated. You just gotta get out there and do them. But hopefully some of these little tips are gonna help you be able to figure out your manuals a little bit better. Because after 25 years, I'm finally starting to figure them out again. So anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.